Yo guys, what's up? It's been a long time since I've done this, or at least it feels like it. But today we're gonna take a look at the new A-Class sedan, the CKD version or the locally assembled version to see if it's any good. Now, as you know, prices start from 211,000 ringgit for this A200 progressive line and goes up to 240,000 ringgit for this A250 AMG line. That makes it about 10 to 18,000 ringgit cheaper than their respective CBU counterparts. And if you haven't yet seen our walk around video, I'll put a link somewhere up here so you can just click on it and it's going to take you right there to our six minute walk around. But in this video, I'll tell you what I like and don't quite like about the A-Class sedan. So let's get right in. This review is brought to you by Petronas Premax 97 with ProRace. Power to move beyond. Not too long after this video review was shot, Mercedes-Benz Malaysia introduced a slight spec upgrade for both the A200 and A250. This time around, the A200 regains the 64-color ambient lighting system as well as power-adjustable front passenger seat. The A200 also adds on blind spot monitoring system, whereas the A250 adds on wireless charging, hands-free boot access, active lane keep assist, and automatic high beam. All this means the A200 now goes for 220,000 ringgit, while the A250 is going for just under 244,000 ringgit. That is about a 10k jump for the A200 or a 4,000 ringgit increase over the original A250 sedan. First of all, I think the design of the A-Class sedan is quite stylish. I find the front and rear treatment quite palatable, although if you see the back from certain angles, you can still tell that it is fundamentally an elongated hatch. The flow isn't completely organic, but it's nothing like the Peugeot 207 sedan and the Ford Fiesta sedan. Remember those abominations? On a styling front, I'm pretty sure you can tell that the A-Class sedan takes on a slightly safer design approach, at least compared to the uh, BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe. Lah. And between the two cars you have here, the A250 sedan is clearly the sportier looking bunch, what with the chrome pins on the grille and the full AMG line front bumper. But you know what? They both sit on 18-inch wheels and the design, uh, the twin five-spoke thing, they can look pretty similar, but this one is AMG specific, lah, of course. Standard features here include keyless entry, folding side mirrors, as well as full LED headlights and taillights. But compared to their CBU counterparts, there is no longer run flat tires. They now ship with Continental Eco Contact 6 tires and the A250 no longer comes with cross-drilled front rotors. That's okay, I guess. Something's got to give. I like that folding side mirrors is standard, but what I like slightly more is the fact that keyless entry is available on all four doors, including the A200 sedan. So that is a really nice bonus. But what I don't quite like is the catchment system on this A sedan. Uh, I don't know if it's a CKD thing, but it doesn't catch on or doesn't shut properly. Uh, with the C-Class, it closes very nicely, but here, it needs a bit more force just don't understand what the thing is with uh, new cars and catchment systems but I, I, I thought it was just a Honda issue but turns out I'm wrong. Inside, if you're coming into the Mercedes-Benz for the first time, this is a cabin that is very hard to walk away from because look at it, it's so nice. On the A250 here, you get a nicer steering wheel with the satinated uh, spokes and you also have this flat bottom edge right here, whereas the A200 gets like black. It doesn't look as premium as it does here. And on the A250 also, you get sort of metal pedal shifters, uh, metal foot pedals, and the spokes within the air vents are also satinated. You know why? Because it comes with the ambient lighting system, the whole 64 color thing. And within the air vents itself, the middle part here, there is like a ring for the lights to 
say bleed over into the spoke so at night the air vents sort of light up and it looks really nice again if you're coming into mercedes vents for the first time this is a good time because the cars now just have so much wow factor to them and adding to the whole allure is also this twin 10 and a quarter inch display it's fully digital and this is one design that a lot of other car makers are starting to copy and you can see it catching on and you can easily see why now the instrumentation is very very customizable so you can change the gauge on the left you can change the gauge in the middle you can have the whole display expand to give you a map view the whole works you know it's the fanciest instrument display of all the brands in germany actually actually it's probably the fanciest one in town right now it's hard to beat the animations are nice the graphical layout you have like three different ones to choose from and it also uh, matches uh, thematically between the two so it's got a nice cohesive look to it one thing that i find not so nice is probably the user navigation experience here i think uh, bmw os7 with the whole tile system is much easier to navigate uh, the os8 is even better so i can't wait for that to come but as for uh, just navigating here the touchpad is okay you hear that haptic engine it could use a bit more finessing but as it is it's already pretty good the other way of using this display is uh, by a touch screen which i find is the most well the easiest way to go about and uh, there's also a capacitive button here for you to navigate but it's feels a bit busy to me if i can be honest at the back here the space is not too bad it's not really good it's not really bad it's just somewhere in the middle leg room is all right as you can see it's not a lot of space here and then the roof is also pretty low so i'm about 172 cm and i find the rear seats to be just okay uh, for long drives maybe you'll have trouble moving your feet around because you know the bench is so low and your thigh is not fully supported but in terms of seating comfort i think the backrest is okay it's quite supportive and the front seats for the a250 is actually different it's uh, slightly sportier slightly more supportive than the a200 but generally the cabin of the a-class sedan feels slightly better than the 218i grand coupe so you have that going for you if you want the a-class sedan other things i should mention is the availability of rear air vents now this is a massive upgrade from the cbu model don't understand why it was left out but it's so nice to have it but the air vent design here it's all black unlike the nicer satin ones that you have up front but that's okay you know you've also got one usb type c port down here another one in the center armrest and one more up front so a total of three but the one up front is for your apple carplay and android auto system so it's not a fully wireless experience but the upside is there's no latency so this is good i like it other things i feel like i should add uh, before we go on a drive is the six speaker system they are more you know front focused so they could be better but that's all right they sound decent anyway and there's this little hole here or this uh, channel for you to put your seatbelt buckle in so it doesn't rattle so that's a handy dandy feature as for boot space this guy has 420 liters of space nice <laughs> the rear bench also folds completely flat so you can store longer or bigger or wider or whatever items you know and uh, there is no spare tire so you have a fixer flat kit but then these are not run flats so i guess that becomes a nice to have i suppose um anyway let's go for a drive Okay, let's start off with the A200. That car is powered by a 1.3 liter Renault sourced engine. It's a four cylinder turbocharged engine making about 163 PS and 250 Newton meters of torque. Honestly, I feel like the car is adequately powerful. It is surprising in some sense because it's quite athletic to a degree. And I took it up gunting, you know, there's no problem at all. And the numbers might seem small, but the way it's tuned, the way the seven speed dual clutch uh, get drag transmission uh, manages to squeeze power out from the engine is actually quite commendable. 
it doesn't in any way feel underpowered and I think um, if you fit like four adults in the car and then you go up Genting, it's still not gonna struggle. Gear shifts are smooth, power delivery is quite even, although it does miss out on the top end as you know characteristics of a small displacement engine. But low down, it has a lot of shove and it's perfect for everyday kind of urban use. There's no faulting it even though, you know, on paper, it's a small engine. Now, despite this being a smaller displacement engine, being what, 1.33 litres, it's still more powerful than BMW's B38 offering in the 218 Grand Coupe. Over there, it makes just about 140 PS and 220 Newton meters of torque. So you're looking at a deficit of, what, 20 over a horsepower, as well as 30 Newton meters of torque. In real-world driving, sometimes you do feel it, but I think the power delivery in the Beamer is a little bit more uh, linear. There's a bit more top-end shove. And over here in the A200, I feel like it's deliberately tuned to give you more power down low, which I think is good, you know, for those of you who drive this on a daily basis. As for the A250, which I'm driving here, <laughs> this car feels so much more powerful. Number one, it uses Mercedes-Benz's in-house M260 engine. So that's a two-liter four-cylinder engine making about 224 PS as well as 350 Newton meters of torque. That is, on paper, about 80 horsepower and 100 Newton meters more than the smaller A200. And it feels so much more powerful. Number one, it sounds better. There's a more bassy note, a bit more German sounding than French sounding, if I can say so but uh, it's lacking a bit in the exhaust department, that, but that's whatever, you know. The performance in this engine is really good. It really does feel like a six second car, and in sport mode, if I were to put it in sport mode, it just goes. And before you know it, I'm already doing 120 in fifth gear. Uh, the thing is about this car, I feel like uh, it doesn't put power down to the road very efficiently because when I'm driving, sometimes when you're powering out of a corner, the wheel does spin a little. Um, that's partly because it's running on eco tires. So if I were to buy this car, the tires will be the first thing I am changing. It should at least run on touring tires and UHP if you're generous. But eco tires uh, really doesn't do this car justice. Another reason why I think uh, power isn't put down efficiently is because it doesn't have 4MATIC. So both variants are now front wheel driven and both use DCT. But the difference here is uh, it uses Mercedes-Benz's own 7-speed DCT. I think it has come a long way, the drive line, in terms of smoothness, in terms of refinement. Even coming from just the A-Class from the previous generation, I think this is a much better driveline system, more well put together. It's just a much more pleasant mechanical experience altogether. I still think the shift profile can use a little bit more refinement because as it is, uh, it's smooth when you're up to speed, but when you're cruising in town uh, at lower gears, at lower speeds, sometimes the transmission tends to jerk a bit. Uh, BMW does it better in this sense, but you know, they're, they're close already. For the fuel efficiency test, the A200 managed about 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers, whereas the A250 managed about 8 liters per 100 kilometers. The test was carried out with Petronas Primax 97 with ProRace. The fuel gives you unbeatable power as well as better responsiveness and fuel efficiency. Now with Settle, you can enjoy the ultimate convenience and safety. Pay for petrol from inside your own car. Just pay, pump and go. You can use it at all Petronas stations nationwide. And while you're at the station, enjoy Makan at Mesra. Fresh and well-balanced premium food at affordable prices available at your convenience. Petronas, your seamless retail on the go partner. As for driver engagement, um, this is like a lot of other Mercedes Benzes. The steering is quite numb, it's lacking in feedback. So if you're coming from, say, even a Volkswagen Golf GTI, it's not gonna give you the best uh, feedback. But for those of you who spend most of your time driving in and around town, I don't even think you'll consider this a drawback. One big difference between the A200 and the A250 is the rear suspension setup. On the A200, it uses a torsion beam setup, but here on the A250, it uses a multi-link system. The difference 
if I can even remotely tell, is secondary ride for the A250 is better because of the multiple linkages and the additional bushings. Uh, that's the benefit of a multi-link suspension. But if you were to drive it side by side, you'll be hard pressed to tell, man. If you're driving up Gunting, I think besides the less uh, sophisticated feeling torsion beam setup, you, you really can't tell the difference. I mean, most people won't be able to tell unless you're driving in places such as Port Klang where roads are constantly undulating. Uh, that's when you feel slightly better ride quality. But you know, a lot of cars, a lot of really good hot hatches use torsion beam system. And the one upside, I guess, to the A200 is it's 80 kilograms lighter than the A250. So on certain roads or more technical narrow roads, it's going to feel like the more agile car to drive. Okay, so the last few things would be, I guess, NVH levels. Generally, it's okay, but I feel like the A250, in terms of uh, vibration especially, you can feel the engine a little bit more, like through the pedals and whatnot. And I think this is largely because of the uprated mounting system. So you do get some of the engine that's transmitted over the pedals. But I guess besides that, that's about it. Uh, tire raw is pretty noticeable but maybe it will be better with a better set of tires, who knows? Wind noise and all that, they are okay. It's as good as cars in this price bracket gets. And then we have the safety system. Now, as Mercedes-Benz's entry-level car, it only has AED and seven airbags as standard, and the A250 adds on blind spot monitoring as well as the whole audible warning thing. But you don't get adaptive cruise control, there's no lane keeping or lane centering assist, and there is no adaptive cruise control. But the fact that there is AED and it has saved me at least on one occasion is a commendable thing because for 211,000 ringgit, a Mercedes-Benz uh, and it being standard, I think it's a good effort for Mercedes-Benz and it's only going to get better from here on out, right? So, yeah. So, what do I think of the Mercedes-Benz A-Class sedan? Well, I think if you're starting out your Mercedes-Benz journey, the A200 is actually a really good option. Because number one, it's sufficiently powerful, it has pretty good fuel efficiency, and it also has AEB as standard, keyless entry for all four doors, and it has a pretty stylish interior. It also makes for a pretty good second or third car option because it's small enough for you to do your everyday routine or drive along narrow roads or tight parking spaces in the city. So it's almost brainless if you need a small luxury compact car. The A250 on the other hand is in a bit of a tough spot because at 240,000 ringgit there are other more appealing options like the BMW 320i as well as the Volkswagen Arteon. But I guess at the end of the day, if you really like the car and if you see a proper use case for it, if you can justify having a small Mercedes-Benz like this at home, then by all means, just buy it because I don't see anything wrong with it. In fact, I think this is a huge upgrade compared to the generation before, which was only available as a hatchback, mind you. So this, to some people, has been the compact Mercedes-Benz that they have been waiting for a long time. But if you're coming from a, say, Volkswagen Golf GTI, then I'm sure your upgrade path will look a little bit more different. Maybe a C-Class or a 3 Series would suit your needs better. For this, well, it's not going to sell in huge numbers, but it's a nice car. But I'll hand it over to you. What do you guys think of the A-Class sedan? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. Like this video if you haven't already and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. This review is brought to you by Petronas Premax 97 with ProRace. Power to move beyond.